Tammy Magazine presents for you Phone Interview with Trayvon Wiggins. Enjoy. Hi, Travell. How you doing? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's going on? I was calling you because it was a request from our TNT audience. They all wanted to know your story. So you got a couple of minutes so we can sit down and answer some of these questions that our uh, our readers have? Of course I do. What's going on? All right. So for the people who aren't familiar with you, Travell, give them a little bit of history about you, Cornbed, uh, Big Vale. You know, tell them the storyline behind who you are and why people need to get to know you if they don't know you already. Okay, the story started far, far long ago in this far off planet. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> and cornbread was created. Cornbread was created from a southern acronym of, you know, southern southern homeboy chasing that money. But I said B R E D, so it's K O R N B R E D, cornbread. You know, and it it came off really good, like that the big guy, like that the biggie small mixed with some heavy D, sharing his story. You know. Um, on my grind, real, real good with the music thing. I, I ran into Pitbull when he was on on the come up, and he he took me on his wing and he schooled me to the game. And um, when once he finally got in a position where he can sign artists, I was his first artist under his label. Um, I, I saw the road, and he showed me he showed me a lot of the ins and the outs to the game. But I had an issue. I had a weight issue that I couldn't shake. You know, I, for some reason, food was my was my was my girlfriend. I just couldn't walk away from her. So uh, I lost the deal and um, went into a deep depression from that point, you know, had some had some major weight problems, over 530 pounds. And um, that's when I, I lost my record deal, you know, and um, had to get back in, had to get back in the real world. And that's what Travell came with, came about because, you know, I said, okay, cornbread's not working no more. Let me go with Travell Wiggins, you know, because that's who I am anyway. So, um I, I, I reemerged back into the game, doing the Travell Wiggins thing, and now I'm, I'm I'm working at WBKE here in South Florida as a radio personality from Wednesday nights from eight to six. I mean from six to eight, and um, it's it's been great. It's been great. Now we recently had an opportunity to talk to Dr. Miami. Uh, for those of you who want to hear that interview, it'll be played as a bonus segment after this interview. Um, Dr. Miami really talked about the main reason why he does plastic surgery, why he is Dr. Miami, is because he believes in people being able to feel the best part of themselves from the inside out. Now, one of the things that you did to lose weight is you went and had the surgery. Um, yes. Is there anything that you would want to change about having had the surgery as far as for your weight loss expectations? And what really did you get out of the whole aspect of having the surgery? And what do you advise for people who are thinking about getting it done in the future? Well, I had I had the vertical sleeve surgery. That's at Memorial Hospital where, where they, they took 80% of my stomach. And the only advice I would give to someone that's struggling with the weight issue is to seek help. Don't do what I did. Don't wait too long until it got out of hand to where I couldn't walk. I couldn't I couldn't do normal normal things because uh, the weight had got so bad for me. Um, about changing, I wouldn't change anything. The only thing I would change is doing it sooner, you know, uh, I have a new lease on life. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm breathing better. I'm, I'm moving better, and it, 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 it's one of the best things I did. Not for my life, for, but for my family's life. My son and my daughter, and it, it, it's it's one of the best things I did. So, Doctor Miami, I, I completely agree with you. The inside out is very important. If you feel ugly on the outside, the inside pretty much gonna follow. You know, because you you got to be strong with it. You got to be strong with it. It's a total package. It's just not one part of who you are. You have to be in and out. That's honestly the truth. Now, you you spoke a little bit about the in and outs and being healthier and being able to breathe easier for your family. How is that helping you to transition into the next step of your life? What is the next element of the journey for Travail Wiggins, and where can people look forward to following you along this journey and getting to know more about you as you continue to emerge and grow? Well, you know, you can reach me on Facebook at Travell Wiggins. Uh, that's T R A Z E L L E W I G G I N S. Travell Wiggins. You'll find me. 
um, as far as me emerging into my new profession with this radio personality, I always had the voice uh, for the radio. But now I, I got this new lease on life. It's like before then I, I was scared. I was skeptical. I, I, I was just afraid of the next step because I, I always, I, I still was in the big guy body. I was still scared that, you know, I, I was going to run into those obstacles of food. And now, now that, um, I, I, I feel new. I feel rejuvenated. I feel like a teenager again. It's like, there's no whole bars on me right now, man. I'm not scared of anything. I'm just jumping left and right. Like Steve Harvey said, we just jumping. And so many things are opening up and what, where I see myself in the next three or four years as uh, on the ma- on the main radio station, Clear Channel, here in South Florida, giving back to the community and, and, and bringing light to the people that's in the dark with this weight loss issue because it is a major issue, not just Florida, but all over the world. And, and people need a voice, and I want to be that voice for the people. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. Um, what are, when you have those, those hard nights when um, you, you know, you get – that because food is an addiction, like um, it's a serious drug. Like I used to tell people all the time, people are like, oh, you don't drink or smoke, um, yeah, but my drug of choice is bread and cheese. <laughs> you know, right, you got to right. pick your poison. So, you mean that um, hamburger? <laughs> see, I, I haven't. Somebody like myself, I haven't eaten red meat in over twenty years. And um, August first, I had recently became a fruitarian. Um, so for those who don't know, that's uh, we talked about it in the last issue, uh, knowing your blood type. I really kind of um, found out I'm A positive, which means I'm supposed to be eating in the raw. I'm not supposed to be eating any meat. Um, knowing a lot about your blood can help you a lot about, you know, figuring out what wow. you're supposed to be eating in the first place. And I've been like, uh, today we're recording this August 15th. I'm 15 days clean and sober from um, bread and cheese. Um, Amen. <laughs> well, man, I'm telling you. Uh, but, you know, the first week is hard, but after that everything um, is really just it's, it's a part of the mind. So I say all that just to say, like, what are you doing to keep your mind focused to not relapse into that addiction of of just falling in love with the food? I'm going to say simple and plain, life. That's it. I want to live. I want to live. I done made all the mistakes when it comes to food, you know, and I just – my my son – and my daughter, they, they, they mean the world to me. Again, I was 530 pounds. I could not move. I could not sleep properly. I could not be a part of my kid's life. And I decided to take my life back, and I made this decision to have the surgery. I'm 130 pounds down, and I have never felt better in my life. My joints, my back, my sleeping. My headache stopped. Uh, the, the the hunger pain, the surgery fixes your stomach, true enough, but it don't fix your mind. And my mind is so focused on life right now and what's to come for me. Uh, there's nothing, a piece of bread, cheese, cake, uh, anything can interfere with this plan right now. I've been down over eight years, and I'm not going back. That's powerful, So, guys. You heard it here. You got your intro into meeting Travell Wiggins. If you want to know more about him, check out our September issue of the game on um, in our magazine for the month of September. You can um, subscribe at uh, tnemag.webs.com. All the links will be below. Also, the link so that you can follow Travell will also be below. And um, stay tuned because we're going to have the next phone interview with Dr. Miami. All right, thanks, Travell. Stay tuned for phone interview with Dr. Miami. Good morning, Dr. Miami. How are you this morning? Good morning. Thank you for having me, Nicole. Good, good. I I just wanted to um, ask you a couple of quick questions. Um, We are so happy that you took the time off to speak with us. Uh, One of the things that a lot of people of color have been having an issue with with surgery or some of the questions I want to address with you and so you can have an opportunity to clear up for the community. Um, First things first, um, what are some of the reasons why um, people get surgery um, in your perspective in today's culture, and um, how do you feel like that reflects the inside person? 
Well, people get surgery. Well, there's really only one reason to get surgery, which is to improve your self-esteem. If there's a part of your body um, that you can't fix in the gym um, and can be helped with good, you know, safe cosmetic surgery, then it can be a real, real help for a person's self-esteem and their ultimate happiness and life satisfaction. Um, so, for example, uh, our most common operations are uh, tummy tucks. After women have babies, the skin gets stretched out. There's a lot of stretch marks. There's no exercise in the gym that can get rid of that skin. No matter how many crunches you do or how much weight you lose, once the skin has been stretched out, the only solution for that is a tummy tuck and cut the skin away. Um, another real popular operation is breast augmentation, which, you know, obviously, if your breasts have stopped growing, uh, they're not going to you know, magically appear overnight, and there's no pill for that. There's no exercise. Um, and so people feel self-conscious. They don't fill out their dresses. Women don't fill out their bikinis, and that helps a lot. And, and the third big operation lately is the Brazilian butt lift, which for women who are not blessed with curves and they want to have that curvy look, a lot of the styles today, dresses and so forth, um, sort of demand curves. Um, there's no exercise or machine in the gym that's going to give you hips, for example. You can work out your glutes and get your butt a little bit perkier, but there's no exercise to, to give you that actual hourglass shape. So um, what we do is we take fat from the areas of the body you don't want it, like the tummy and the sides or the back or the arms, and put it in the hips and the butt. And, um, you know, people, people find that, you know, as their self-esteem improves, they are happier. And when they're happier, they, do, they get more out of life. You know, they, how you feel about yourself can affect the kind of company you keep, the jobs you apply for, the... You know, how often you smile, you know, that kind of thing. So um, that's the only reason to have plastic surgery is to boost your own self-esteem. It's not a good idea to have plastic surgery to please somebody else or on the suggestion of somebody else, you know. It should come from within. Now, you spoke a little bit about uh, the curves and have the looks of uh, features that you weren't born with. Um, how do you feel like people of color are affected by this, and how is it affecting the culture by people changing their bodies to look more like people of other cultures? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, and it, it's not, it, believe it or not, it's not just a phenomenon that's happening here in America. Um, the curvy is in. Um, and, uh, you know, people of color are blessed, generally blessed with more curves than, than other people. And so um, we're kind of, the entire world aesthetic ideal is slowly shifting towards that. Um, a, a case in point, I had a, a surgeon from China come a few months ago to have the operation done on her. And she's a plastic surgeon. She went back to China to teach surgeons over there how to do it. So um, it, just as an aside, it goes beyond just American culture. It's now spreading worldwide. And these operations were developed and first, uh, in, you know, uh, became widespread in South America, um, in Brazil. We call it the Brazilian butt lift for a reason, Brazil, Colombia, et cetera. So, um, yeah, the people who, are, who aren't burned or blessed with these curves can now get them through surgery. Um, how, how it's affecting, uh, you know, the, the culture in general, I mean, that, I, think, I think you can answer that better than me. <laughs> it's Mr. Nielsen in, um, in the sorry, black sorry. culture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it gets mixed reviews in the black culture. Uh, it, get, it gets uh, mixed reviews, yeah. To get a surgeon's perspective on it. Yeah, I mean, from a, from a surgeon's perspective on it, I mean, the demand is booming. You know, from a surgeon's perspective, this is this is the most uh, fastest growing operation uh, in the United States year over year um, and maybe in the history of plastic surgery. I mean, the, the idea of going from boxing square to curvy um, you know, was never really, never really quite as popular as it is now. And, and like I said, year over year, we're seeing 150%, 200% increases in the number of people that are having these operations. Tell the readers a little bit about your book and how the conversation is kind of helping sure. people to show their children about why they're getting these surgeries. Sure. So, you know, um, in 2008, I wrote a children's book that is geared uh, for parents, you know, moms specifically, to have a conversation with their kids about the surgery they're going to have before they undergo the surgery so that the kids will be prepared for mommy being, you know, uh, you know out of 
you know, in bed for a week or two recovering, or if mommy's going to look different after surgery so the kids aren't as uh, confused by what's going on. Um, I think it's a really important conversation to have with your kids if you're going to have these types of operations. The last thing you want to do is put unnecessary worry or stress on your kids. Um, if you're having a tummy tuck, you know, kids generally associate doctor's offices with sickness, how, you know, fear, death even. You know, they want to know, is mommy sick? What's happening to mommy? Why can mommy take me, take me to school? So it's a, it's a very, you know, very simple, very straightforward uh, children's book explaining that mom's going to have some surgery and she's, gonna, she's having the surgery to feel better about her body. And, um, and you know, maybe, maybe, maybe grandma's going to pick her up from school tomorrow instead of mommy, you know, for the next week, and, and things are going to be a little different in the house until mommy's better. And also to prepare if mommy, for example, in the book, the mom gets a nose job, she's going to look a little bit different. So, um, again, these are, these, this is the reality of modern life. And so kids are, are definitely a part of that, and so they need to be included in the conversation. Not so that they necessarily are encouraged to have plastic surgery. Of course, kids don't have plastic surgery. Only adults do. But when the adults in their life have surgery, kids need to be aware of what's going on so that they don't get unnecessarily frightened. Yeah, now, some of the things that um, you had mentioned um, to me before was uh, some of the different benefits of getting surgery for um, yeah. mainly uh, you talk about women. Uh, what are some of the, the benefits that you think that all women of every culture can get to, like, benefit their marriage and their self-esteem? Absolutely, um, absolutely, very ab ab absolutely. So, so, you know, self-esteem is – definitely linked with confidence and confidence is sexy and obviously if if a woman feels sexy she's going to be uh you know happier in the bedroom with her spouse with her boyfriend um and so that's that's the feedback that i get from my own patients and their husbands that you know you change you can change one little thing obviously if, you, if your marriage has other problems this is not going to cure all of them but certainly it's a big part of a happy relationship so when a woman feels better about her body, she feels sexier, um, she's less, uh, you know, she's less inhibited, let's say, or, or feels more confident, um, that in and of itself is sexy, and that can kindle or rekindle, you know, sparks that may have been lost. Um, so it definitely is, we definitely have many, many, many emails and, and thank you notes from couples. Um, you know, you mentioned women, but men also get plastic surgery. Um, and, one of the common things men get is liposuction uh, and, uh, you know, gynecomastia, which is when men develop breast tissue because of either um, genetics, because it happens during puberty, or from hormone changes, or from drugs, or even steroid use in the gym. Um, and men can feel self-conscious, too, about going to, the, going to the beach or taking their shirt off. So um, that's one thing that we do from another thing is rhinoplasty and chin implants, which are big with men. Um, and it, again, can boost uh, a man's self-confidence. And confidence is sexy, whether it's in a man or a woman. Um, another thing, since we were talking about the kids, um, can you tell the readers about some of the uh, surgeries women can have after having children? Because we talked about a lot of issues. Sure. Have postpartum sure. depression, and they don't feel sexy sure. anymore after having kids, sure. and they lose their sexual desire. Tell them about the yeah. surgeries that they yeah. can get. Yeah, there, there, there's, sexual yeah, I mean, the, you're absolutely right. The majority of my practice is what we would call a mommy makeover, is, is restoring the body uh, to the way it was or even better uh, to the way it was before they had kids. So, for example, breasts with breastfeeding, or even if you don't breastfeed, just having the milk engorge the breast stretches out the skin, makes them droop. Uh, when the milk goes away, the volume goes away, and they, you, know, they don't, you don't fit into your dresses, you don't feel as sexy um, anymore either when the breasts fall. Um, or if you're just born with breasts that are too big for your body, we can reduce them and, uh, you know, and, and just put them in the right place and make you feel better about that. In the tummy, we talked about tummy tucks, getting rid of the extra skin, tightening the muscles. You know, when a lot of women, a lot of women when they get pregnant, the muscles, you know, the six-pack muscles, the rectus muscles in the middle of their body, they separate, and there, there's a space there that never comes back together. And so their tummies always kind of look a little bit pregnant. Like people, people even if they're not pregnant, look maybe four or five months pregnant because the muscles are weak. And there's no amount of sit-ups that's going to bring those muscles together. You can get them stronger 
but you'll never bring the muscles together in the center again. So there's always that little house, that little weak area. And so a tummy tuck, when we lift up the skin, we're able to sew the muscles together and make that tighten flat again. Um, of course, people, when they gain weight and lose weight in pregnancy, sometimes their booties drop a little bit so we can perk up the booty on the backside. And even in, uh, in the vaginal area, um, things can definitely change. You know, having a baby uh, go through your vaginal canal can definitely stretch things out and, and, and make you feel less sexy in that way. And we have uh, an operation called the labiaplasty that can tighten things. And uh, we even have something called an O-shot, which is platelet-rich plasma injected directly into the G-spot and the clitoris, which increases sexual desire orgasmic responsiveness and uh, you know, intensity and length of orgasm. So, again, we've got lots of, lots of happy women that previously did not feel so great in the bedroom, um, and it really changes their lives for the better. That's awesome, Dr. Miami. Now, could you also uh, tell people, like, how you do price variations as far as, like, if there's, like, a payment plan people can get on yeah. and if there's, yeah, like, a rehabilitation yeah. center that you have that's connected to you? Yes, we do. We do. So so typically, like, a, like a mommy makeover um, – Pa- you know, the packages when you do multiple procedures is cheaper than doing them individually. It's also smarter and, and more convenient because you only have one recovery period. For example, if you do, if you do a tummy tuck or a, or a Brazilian butt lift alone, it could take 10 days, two weeks to recover. It's the same 10 days or two weeks if you combine them. Um, and so instead of having to take two separate vacation periods, you do all at once. Um, you can do your breasts, your tummy, and a BBL all at once and recover in about two weeks. The and and not only and obviously it's cheaper because uh, it's not only is do you get a um, you know each successive procedure is a little cheaper than doing it separate but also the time off from work is less and the recovery time is less. Now all my patients go home or out of the surgery center the same day. Many of them from out of town will go to what's called a recovery house, which is run by a by a registered nurse and they have nurses there 24 hours a day. They give you your food, they give you your transportation to your appointments. Um, and you get to actually recover in the house with, you know, five or six other women who've had similar operations. So there's sort of a camaraderie, like a, like almost like a sorority sisterhood kind of feel to the house, um, which also helps recovery, um, as far as emotionally goes, you know, you can help each other through it. So that's, that's how, that's how most of the, uh, that's how we, that's how I run my practice here. Um, there are financing companies, several financing companies, and your, your credit has to be reasonable, um, but uh, you can finance it over two years or over five years, depending on uh, on your credit and, and how long you want to pay it over. And tell the readers a little bit about where they can find you in your practice and how they can follow you on your social media. Sure. So you, you, um, um, my practice is located, obviously, in Miami and Bay Harbor Islands. Um, you can find me online and on all social media as The Real Dr. Miami, T-H-E-R-E-A-L-D-R-M-I-A. Am I the real Dr. Miami? And uh, it's super nice talking with you. And I uh, hope I was informative for your listeners and readers. And uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. They can email me anytime. That's right, guys. You heard it here. Feel free to um, email Dr. Miami. All the links will be below. And check out his article yeah, or, or next they can, month issue. Or they, they, can, they can DM me. They can send me snapshots on, on Snapchat, The Real Dr. Miami, um, or they can follow me on Instagram at The Real Dr. Miami or tweet me with a DM. That's even easier than email sometimes. And I've got social media assistants that help me, and we try to answer every single message. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Miami. Thanks, guys. I want to welcome my dog to the cane, cornbread. What they do, big boy, now you take a